Oh, they still at it, causing that distraction. Makama? <laughs> oh, this motherfucker likes her. Oh, you want to act all out. If I do it for her, maybe I can get the booty. Like, nah. Now they're going to start a war. Oh! Hey, somebody come check on her. Look, look at you. You threw the rock first! <laughs> what? Distraction. She most likely good. Oh, she's good. Oh, they're gonna bum rush him now. That's what they were waiting for. Hey, what? Nah. Hey, boy, ain't no fucking way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. I think what they're trying to do is rally them up. She's not really dead. Ah, oh, nah, this this turned to a full blown war. Yeah, he must be lying or some shit. All the people are like, "Hey, I don't know about this." Nigga, WD forty. で、この子力加減がわからへん言うてますんや。どないかなりませんか。なれろ。なれるしかない。先生、宇佐美先生。行くぞ。ね、で、オイズニードヘルプ、バナニードヘルプモー。これが。やいっす。治療の一室で立って
Look at Makima over here spurring these motherfuckers on. Bro, that's... That's somebody who's on your side. What the fuck? Did nobody know about him? And it's crazy because y'all are the ones who started this shit. Like, it's, isn't that the dude who let Maru and Kariko in? Like, what? Damn. They do such a great job of visual visualizations in this. We've never had the kill a regular person before. Wow. Right when he was regretting that. Yeah, he gave her a wow. Wow. God damn, half of illusion cutting onions, bro. Fuck. What's crazy is because it's like they made that such a powerful moment and we just met these two characters. And it was like right when he was wondering, maybe I should have just let her be a monster, you know? I put her through so much and then she says, nah, thank you. <laughs> もう。死んだ。まさか。あいつらに。いや。彼女は人の寿命で死んだ。ここに集落がある<笑> At one point, it was going to boil over. Kanojo,のために作ったものだ。もう必要ない。元々二人で住んでいたんだが、怪我人が迷い込んできて、気まぐれで義手を作ってやったら、いつの間にかどんどん集まってきて。そうだ。俺は。I think I know who this is. Kanojo,が喜ぶんだ。I think I know who this is. Because if they're the kids, that's um Shiro or Shino? Because he always tinkered with stuff. This guy just absorbed the power. So he was on some bullshit from day one. Oh, there's there one left? I'm kind of glad there is one left. Cause that guy's on some bullshit. I think that's, um, I think his name is Shino or Shiro. The one that was looking at Mimi Hime's picture. Don't tell me that was Mimi Hime. 
こっちは医者なんですけどんこのグードルキングガーイは稲崎先生じゃないのあ、oh, ラビン2年くらい前かなある日な何も言わずにふっといなくなっちゃったんだよな外科の知識もあって宇佐美先生の技術を勉強してたもう人を死なせないんだとか言って They're, they're painting Robin as a good person, but I don't think Robin's a good person. Like, I don't think he's a good person at all. Fucking Maru. Yeah. So, would you gonna leave me? Because <laughs> it could be a situation. Nah, don't tell me he's gonna kill himself. That's the same thing on the gun. Fucking Makima. Yeah, he's gonna kill himself. Yeah, nothing else to live for. That's how they ended. Whatever this OST is, is hitting. You know, Maru feels worse because he's gonna feel like this is because of him. Like. It's only destroying things. Yeah. It only destroys things. You're saving people. Yeah. Wow. God, that hit. That's crazy how those sides are just switched now. Their choices. Wow. Ah, oh, man. That was Mimi Hime. That was Mimi Hime. Yep. That was Mimi Hime and um, I forgot his name. It's like Shiro or Shino. Whatever which one. And this is the past because she can see the future. This is established episode one. I think the buttons that they wear on their uniform is what he was holding in his hand and also what's on the gun. Because it looks kind of similar. It's, it's very crude in the way that it looks with Tokyo. But... So this confirms what I was saying, um, for what it seems like. Mimi Hime, we know as her character, she knows how to see into the future. Um, episode one, she was telling Tokyo that they're going to have a test today, and Tokyo was even asking her, how do you know? She's like, oh, I just had a feeling. And then even later on, she's like, I feel like something really dark is about to come. I think that's what she said on episode like two or something like that. Um, so we know Mimi Hime can see in the future, so she essentially kind of like foresaw her own death in her dying. Um, Dr. Usume, I think his name is, um, same gray hair, same sort of plain look on his face, and, um, 
also like the same eyes to be honest the same has to be shiro and the person who died has to be mimikime they probably just went by a different name after the collapse um this is something that i spoke about on episode what was it six or five where i just kind of had like the whole theory about what was kind of happening here because i was like i feel like there's two different timelines in the way that things are happening you have some of the kids who have certain so uh these sort of distinct abilities at best especially when the uh, the one kid died in the wheelchair um i think it's toshiro or something like that like when he died there was like an egg that was left behind and when we see with Maru is that he's crushing these red spheres, but that is what literally looks like what was left after they cremated him. Um, also, when it comes to reference with people knowing about heaven and they're talking about the facility, particularly with the girl who used to take care of Maru, that was probably somebody who was working in the facility. I think the same thing with the doctor that uh, Koriko is going after. I think that he's from this facility also, so that I can explain why he's able to transfer people's brains over. Because in the previous episode, they were talking about things, how they can transfer consciousness of someone else into robots or into other people. So that in and of itself is a marker to show where the series is essentially kind of going or showing you what's already established. Like this is myth, but this is fact within their world. And there's people who, already know how to do these things so the doctor that Kariko is going after I assume that he's already worked there before in the past and then he was bringing his stuff into the future I don't know if he's one of the kids or not um he seems older than uh Shiro at uh the age that he is at this point in time so I don't think he's necessarily one of the kids but there's so many people in that building who are researching and then when we're looking at building we literally see like some sort of AI system, but yet it's also humanoid at the same time. So they could have like, they can have the brain of somebody else. And I've also, when I was talking about it before in the thing, I was like, I was referencing how like, this is kind of very similar to Evangelion in the way that it is with angels and the impacts and everything like that. And that's kind of like what we're getting here. And in him saying that she can turn into a monster just because of this disease i assume the disease is the same thing that happened to uh other kid in a wheelchair that happened to the girl who was taking care of maru i think that it was probably that same disease and that's why he was cutting off pieces of her and affects these kids primarily because they are genetically enhanced or they're like mixed with these monsters because we saw what the babies actually look like when um cuckoo was saying how like you know they don't have any faces and all that other stuff so this was <sighs> this was an episode and i didn't think to care so much about these characters that we just met but this this show does a fantastic job of displaying emotions and having them in the forefront and just kind of like portraying them so well where you kind of forget that you just kind of you know just learned about this character um it kind of puts anguish in there and then it also helps because of the fact that it's tapering onto maru and his character and how he feels about him just destroying things um like he he goes and he kills these monsters which it seemed obvious that like these monsters are most likely all the kids that are within the facility or even like the babies maybe they transform into them at this point in time but um he kills them and he's able to do these things and his actions of you know killing one of them before which led to them being able to rush in and take over it just leads to so much bullshit and he's uh really questioning his own existence or his own powers and what he's truly going to do like you know am i am i really here for good um, also, we get a mention of Robin and all of a sudden Robin is some medical technician and shit like to me I don't think Robin <laughs> I don't think Robin is Is a good person it's either the doctor switched his mind with Robins or something or Robin is just like some sort of dickhead It's just he's portrayed so well It seems like there's going to be some sort of negative that's really drawn to his character because it doesn't really make sense for him to 
Um, all of a sudden he disappears from all these other places. All of a sudden there's another faction that comes in. There's a problem. It's the same time when Carrico, uh, you know, lost brother slash sister, the whole body swap situation. It's like too much kind of coincidences for me. And it's, you know, picking up a character to this great extent just seems like, um, total bullshit, if you will. So I'm waiting to see him essentially be a dickhead and that's what i assume this was going to come from this but overall fantastic episode probably my favorite episode of the entirety of this they just know how to just do emotions uh the scenes just quite well and yeah that's pretty much it this is kyd like comment subscribe and all the good shit i am out peace